You are playing some oldies but goodies on your record player. But upon close inspection, you can see that more dust is concentrated on the inner part of the vinyl record than the outer part. You being a physicist, you speculate that this is something to do with circular motion and centripetal force. So you need to think of the relationship between how far these dust particles are from the center of the rotating disc and the centripetal force needed to keep these dust particles in circular motion. Do you recall the two equations for centripetal force? F is mv squared of r, but it's also equal to m omega squared r. In this equation, radius is inversely proportional to the centripetal force. But here, radius is proportional to force. Do these equations contradict each other? Let's find out. Here's a guy swinging a ball by one end of a piece of string. If we look from above, we can mark out the radius and its linear speed. And remember, you can figure out the linear speed by dividing the circumference 2 pi r by the time it takes to complete one circular path. If he swings another ball, but attaches it to a longer piece of string, that would increase the radius of the circular path. As he swings both balls, he decides to keep them aligned, one on top of the other. Keeping them aligned means that they need to sweep out the central angle at the same rate. In other words, they must have the same angular speed. To achieve that, the second ball must travel with a larger linear speed in order to catch up, because it has a larger circumference. Let's see if we can explain this using our two equations. The mass of each ball is constant, and in this case, we deliberately keep the angular speed and the centripetal force constant. So here, this equation isn't useful for us because there is only one variable. But mv squared over r allows us to compare linear speed and the radius. It tells us that if we increase the radius of the circular motion, applying the same force will allow a larger linear speed. Let's change things up a little and this time, we keep linear speed the same. The second ball will lag behind because of its larger circular path. In the same amount of time, the angle that the second ball can sweep is less than the first ball. That tells us, as the radius increases, the angular speed decreases. This time, mv squared over r is not useful. That's because it only leaves us with one variable without anything else to compare it with. But here, only mass and force are constant, so we can form a relationship between angular speed and the radius. As the radius increases, angular speed must decrease if force is to remain constant. Again, this makes physical sense. From these two thoughts experiments, we have learned that we have to consider which are constants and which are variables before choosing the correct centripetal force equation to use. Going back to our initial question, why are there more dust particles in the center of the rotating disk? I'll simplify the diagram here, and now we have to figure out which equation to use. Let's make the assumption that the dust particles all have the same mass. And we also know that every point on the vinyl record rotates with the same angular speed. We have two variables here, so this is the equation to use. If a dust particle is further away from the center of the disk, that means its radius is larger. So if radius increases, the centripetal force needed to keep the dust particle in circular motion also needs to increase. There is only so much frictional force and electrostatic force to provide the centripetal force keeping these dust particles on the disk in a circular motion. So beyond a certain radius, there will be insufficient centripetal force such that these dust particles will fly off at a tangent.